Okay, so we've reached the last video of our little mini-series here. We've done all the hard work. We've built out these five sub-schedules, and now we're finally at the easy part, linking up the balance sheet. So what started as something that was complicated and confusing, we broke it down into micro-steps, and now we're ready to close out. So let's go back to our model and just work our way from the top. The very first one was let's link up the depreciation because we just finished that schedule. I'm just going to do equals, scroll down to my CapEx and depreciation schedule, and then where was that number? Total depreciation was right here. Just going to hit enter. And now my income statement is completely done. I've got that new depreciation baked in there. So now let's build out our balance sheet. This is the final step, and let's just go in order. So step one, to build out the cash, I'm going to link it to the ending cash on the statement of cash flows because I know they need to match, right? So I'll do equals, come down here to the bottom of my cash flow statement, click the ending cash. Hit enter, and I've got that there. Step two, the retained earnings is just going to be the previous period plus my net income. So that's how that's built. So the previous period plus my net income already done in my income statement. Hit enter there. Now let's look for step three. And you can see right now we're in balance, right? So that's a good sign. Step three, carry for the contributed capital flat. We really skipped this, but there's not going to be a change in contributed capital most likely in this business. That's an easy one. Just link it to the previous period. Step four. So now we get into our schedules. Accounts receivable, inventory, prepaid expenses, accounts payable, and accrued expenses, all done on our working capital schedule. So really nice, really simple. I'm just going to do equals and link it to that schedule that we already built. Come down to our working capital. Here's accounts receivable right here. I'll hit enter. My Excel shortcut, I can just do control D for the inventory, control D for the prepaid expenses. I'm just bringing that number down. And then for accounts payable, same idea. I'm just going to link it to my working capital schedule. So equals, here's my accounts payable. I'll hit enter. Again, I'm just going to press control D to bring down the accrued expenses. So just like that, I've got five line items for my balance sheet already done. So now let's look at step nine, the fixed assets. We're going to do the previous period plus our new CapEx, but then minus the depreciation. Right? We've got to strip that out because this is reported on a net basis. So let's build that out. Equals our previous period plus our new CapEx forecast which is way down here in our CapEx schedule. This was that 200 we built. And then minus, you can see I've added that to the formula here. Let's strip out our depreciation. So that's in the income statement. I've got that there. I'm going to hit enter. And then step 10 is the last step, our debt schedule. Right? We're just going to link this to the ending balance of our debt schedule because we did all the hard work down below. So equals, come down to my debt schedule, the one we just finished my ending balance, right? We said they're going to pay off 200. It should be 1.4 at the end of the year. So I hit enter. And now let's take a look at our balance sheet. First off, great news. We're in balance. You know, that doesn't always happen. And I feel like I've got reasonable numbers all the way throughout my schedule. And I know exactly where they came from. More importantly, let's take a look at how our balance sheet now impacts the cash. Right? We have our net income. We add back that depreciation because it's non-cash. Then we have our change in the current assets and the current liabilities, which is, again, just the collection of cash from customers and us paying bills to our vendors. Then we jump to the investing section. Here's our 200 of CapEx, right? If I open this up, this is the calculation that we previously had, the previous period minus the current period minus the depreciation. So I'm confident that our formula is working and our schedule is working. And then same for the change in debt. Here's the 200 we forecast. And again, I'm not linking this somewhere else, right? This is the key with the cash flow statement. I'm not linking this down to my debt schedule, right? Everything goes to my balance sheet, and then my statement of cash flows is just the difference in, in the balances on my balance sheet. And that's super important so that your cash flow statement doesn't get all over the place. Okay, so that's it. I hope you found this mini series helpful. I hope you learned something new. I know I went through it quickly, but I wanted it to be. Big picture and frankly short enough that people could sort of tolerate it while they're scrolling it on their phone. So if you have any questions for me at all, I'd love to just, you know, help you out with any questions. Please let me know. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.